Hi, I'm Ernie Zor on behalf of Pure to Spring Software, and this is the 36th video in our Frequently Asked Questions series. It's about how the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, which I believe was signed into law on March 11th of this year, how it affects the child care credit and therefore how it affects the calculation of child support for families that have child care expenses. Now the child support app is up on my screen right now and uh, what you're looking at is version 11.31. Now that's critical because if you don't have 11.31, you won't have the function that I'm be talking about in this video. Okay, so make sure you've got 11.31, and let's get started. The real subject of this video is how the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 affects child support. So I'm not going to go into the entire act, which is about the length of a book. I'm only going to refer to section 9631 dealing with the child care credit. In 25 words or less, section 9631 changes three parts of the child care income tax credit. First, the $3,000 maximum allowance was raised to $8,000 and double that for two children. And I'm going to get the, I think I have it underneath here somewhere, hopefully. Yeah, here it is. This is Form 2441 that's used for calculating the child care credit. And it, it's the second thing that changed was the table of percentages that you see on, on the form. You see them down here. I'll bring them up in the middle there. You see them down there at the beginning. They range from 35% to 20%. Well, the IRS uh, changed that. Well, I should say the IRS changed it, but the um, American Rescue Plan Act changed that 35% uh, from 35 to 50%, and the applicable income threshold changed from the $15,000 that you see there on the form to $125,000. And because many of the taxpayers have less than $125,000, the credit can be significant when you're doing a child support calculation. What I've been seeing is that where the old percentage was 20%, for example, the new one is 50%, and that'll make, a, again, it'll make a considerable difference in the support calculation. The third thing is a credit phase-out occurs at 400000 You know, I don't know how that's applicable. That's going to be to most families. Uh, instead of the prior provision, which I think Form 40, 2441 here says, um, from 43,000 to no limit. So I don't know. It seems like there was no limit uh, before this. And um, I haven't done one of these returns in about 20 years, so I can't remember exactly. But it's not important anyway because uh, we're talking about the, uh, the, the new law, essentially. Now, I could have made a short video dealing with the calculation changes that I just mentioned, but a letter I received from an attorney made some interesting observations about how ROCSG 11 should deal with the new law. Um, before we received uh, the attorney's email, uh, we thought we had acted pretty quickly. Uh, we implemented in software the new law within days of the president signing the bill on March 11th. However, the email gave us cause to rethink the way the program deals with the act. What the attorney pointed out was that in cases where objections were filed concerning cases that were heard before 2021, there's often a need to apply the old child care credit calculation that was in effect at that time. And that's ignoring the fact that the American Rescue Plan Act has the child care credit calculation going back to its pre-2021 values on January 1st. 2022. I don't know, how, how did that sound? Is that a sentence okay? I guess what I'm trying to say there is that the American Rescue Plan Act is only making these changes for the calendar year 2021. So in, in January of 2022, it's going back to the way it always was. And so what the attorney's email was saying was that um, there really is going to, there's a need right now, but there'll be a need again in the future to be able to go back and forth between these two calculations. And what he was pointing out was that because the existing line 21 of the program had no override for that, 
you were kind of stuck if you wanted to do a non-2021 calculation. Now, I suppose you could do what you've been doing for the last 20 years, and that's use the deviation line. But we were thinking that there was probably going to be a more elegant solution. And we didn't need to give it much thought before we realized that the best solution, of course, would be what we were just talking about, is that's allowing you to switch back and forth between the two calculations. And uh, let's, let's take a look at that. I'm going to flip back. Hopefully, yeah, here we go. Go, go back to the child support program and let's go back down to line 21 and this is going to be the end of the video because there's this is so simple uh, so simple that I can't find here it is okay on right underneath line 21 F there it is use the American Rescue Plan Act values for 2021 you check the box it's going to be using the values that we just mentioned if you uncheck the box, and incidentally, this could be set in the default file too. Don't forget, you check, you, you clear the checkbox, and and it's going to do it the way it always has, and and will as of uh, will do as of 2022. And uh, there you see it. That's it. Pretty simple stuff. Makes for a nice short video, which everybody likes that. So I told you this was going to be a, a short video. Now that I think of it. Um, maybe I didn't actually say that, but I would have if I had thought of it. Anyway, I was true to my word. I'm done. Now, if someone asks you to do a child support calculation involving child care expenses, you can ask them whether they want the 2021 calculation, and you, you kind of dazzle them with your knowledge of the subject and start asking them questions instead of them asking you questions. Hey, I'm, I'm not serious about that. I'm only kidding. Uh, anyway, it'll make them think twice about asking you questions. All right, that takes us to the end of this video. And what was I going to say at the end here? Oh, subscribing. It's nice to let us know that you, you get something out of these videos. So if you want to subscribe or give us the old thumbs up, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, it makes us feel good to know that we're helping you in some way. So thanks. And until next time, I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me. And on behalf of the Puritus Sphinx family, I want you to stay healthy and happy, and I wish you all the best. Take care.